My name is Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I am here with a video on the Game Awards 2017. I'm mostly going to stick to the winners of all the awards but I just want to take a couple of seconds to talk about a couple of my favourite announcements. You know Death Stranding, we saw some more of that. That was really cool although it told us literally nothing, probably left me more confused than before I saw it. But you know I'm, I'm interested. Bayonetta 3, hell yes and uh, from software are working on a thing of some description. I don't think I've ever been as excited by 30 seconds of literally no information as I was by that. But uh, they've got the uh, information, sorry, the internet detectives going on a wild goose chase with that little teaser that they showed. But let's crack on with the Game Awards. Of course, we have quite a few to get through. Of course, we'll leave the juiciest ones, which are, or is rather, Game of the Year till last. But let's go through. And the first winner is What Remains of Edith Finch for Best Narrative. Best art direction went to Cuphead, very, very deserved. Best score slash music went to Near Automata. Soundtrack for there was pretty damn awesome. And best audio design, which of course is like voice acting, atmosphere, that sort of thing, went to a very well-deserving Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. Honestly, the audio design in that game is part of what makes it so good, like the whispering and the voices of like your pronunciation, as it were, of her mental illness, that sort of thing, is what, one of the things that makes that game so great, as well as the performance from Melina Jurgens as Senua, and she actually won an award for that performance in the Best Performance category, and Games for Impact also went to Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, and while that category is still like, what does that even mean? I think it's like, sort of leading the charge, as it were, in new directions, and this is one of the few games I can think of, at least in recent memory, that dealt with the topic of mental health, especially in such a centralised way. This dealt with what it's actually like to have a mental illness, as well as, of course, going with this cool story and that sort of thing, and the way it did it was really, really cool, and the fact that they spoke to not only you know, professionals in the field, but obviously sufferers of psychosis and other such... Um, other such mental illnesses was, you know, it showed within the game. So I hope to see more games and just things in general tackle this because it's a weirdly taboo topic. And to be honest, the, the less it becomes taboo, the more we can kind of help people who suffer from it, basically. So uh, we have Overwatch winning yet another award to add to its already overfilling awards cabinet for best ongoing game. Best independent game went to Cuphead, and I cannot disagree with that, although we had a ton of really cool independent games this year, as we do every year. Cuphead is definitely one for the ages. We got Monument Valley 2 taking best mobile game. I don't really play games on mobile, so I literally have no opinion on that. Best handheld game went to Metroid Samus Returns. Not played that myself, the handheld version. Bit surprised not to see Pokemon take it, because that seems to be like the obligatory winner, but you know, nice to see it going to not that's something it isn't Pokemon, even if it is still a Nintendo property. Best VR AR game is Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Can't really disagree there, given that there's not really that many system sellers on the VR platform. Best action game went to Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Best action adventure game, bit odd that they're two separate categories, but hey-ho. Went to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Best RPG went to Persona 5. I would be surprised if anyone disagrees with that, really. Best fighting game went to Injustice 2. Not being a huge amount of competition in that particular area, so I don't think Injustice 2 had to work particularly hard to win that award, but it doesn't make it any less deserving, of course. Best family game went to Super Mario Odyssey. Not played it myself, as I don't yet have a Switch, although it has been on my list for a while. But from what I've heard of the reviews and so on, just people online in general, Super Mario Odyssey is an amazing game, so I don't think that's going to be contentious at all. Best strategy game went to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, the XCOM but with Mario and Rabbids game. You know, that's his other name. You'll see it on the back of the box somewhere, I promise. Not really. <laughs> so we have Forza Motorsport 7 taking best sports slash racing game. Most anticipated game went to The Last of Us Part 2. And I can't really disagree with that because, well, it's The Last of Us Part 2. There's a lot of cool games coming up, but a lot of them are kind of hanging in limbo. We don't know when they're going to release, like Kingdom Hearts 3, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, Shenmue 3, stuff like that. So, yeah, all the games we actually know, they're coming out in, you know, in some point next year, probably, or maybe 2019, is The Last of Us Part 2. So, yeah. Trending Gamer went to Guy Beam, who's probably better known under his alias Dr. Disrespect. I've not ever seen his stuff, but I have heard he's a good streamer, so I might actually check out some of his vlogs, assuming they're not subscriber only. Best esports game, I kind of disagree with this one. 
because it's Overwatch. Now, I have put an obscene amount of time into Overwatch. I love that game. Probably, like, almost 200 hours into that game. And for, for someone who doesn't usually play multiplayer games, that's a lot. So, you know, this is not coming out of place of like, oh, Overwatch, blah, blah, blah. No, I love Overwatch. But the esports side of it needs a lot of work. A lot of work. So, I can't really disagree there. Uh, StarCraft 2, but I'm biased because that's really the only esport I watch. So, you know, I'm probably like the least qualified person to talk about esports, but uh, yeah. Best esports player went to Faker, who of course is a League of Legends player. I don't ever watch League of Legends, like esports or otherwise, so I can't really comment on that. Best esports team is Cloud9. Student Game Award then went to Levels Squared. And best debut indie game once again went to Cuphead. Cuphead absolutely sweeping the indie themed categories, and it, what it's totally, totally deserves it. You know, blood, sweat, and tears went into that game. So you know, I'm glad to see them re reaping the rewards not only in sales but of course in shiny awards for their uh, awards trophy. Sorry, awards cabinet. Yes, an award is a trophy, Amy. Well done. <laughs> and we also have the Chinese Fan Game Award, which is JX3 HD. Now, as promised, I have left the best till last, as, of course, the very prestigious Game of the Year Award and Best Game Direction Award both went to the same game that is very, very deserving indeed, and that is none other than Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So, there you have it, the winners of the Game Awards 2017. Less baffling snubs this year, I would say, because, you know, last year we didn't see Undertale win anything, I don't think. And Undertale was like, you know, shooing for a lot of people to think, oh, it's got to win best story, it's got to win best bar, it's got to win this. It didn't win anything, as far as I recall. So, I'm glad to see that not happen again with, like, the darling indie game of this year, which was Cuphead, or at least one of them was Cuphead. Obviously, there's been numerous, as there is every year. So, I'm glad to see that getting the love that it definitely deserves. And I can't really disagree with many of those, to be honest with you. A lot of those, I'm like, yeah, I can't really argue with that, to be honest with you. So, given that this has been a really strong year for games, I don't think I would have been upset with too many categories, because there were so many good games. There probably was a few good contenders for each category but I can't really argue with any of these but you've heard my opinions and me jabbering on for almost eight minutes now but let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below your support is always appreciated thank you and I'll see you next time